now a really serious story uh, this morning and I'm afraid to say it doesn't seem to have been covered by an awful lot of the other news outlets out there and this is the jailing of in total over a hundred years of seven members of a grooming gang based in Rotherham. The offences that they were convicted and have been jailed for uh, were from 1997 up to 2013, showing that, of course, we've still not got to the bottom of all of these gangs. There are still some out there yet to be prosecuted. But more importantly, is this still happening today? Well, someone who risked their career, their livelihood and still campaigns on this issue is the former detective constable with the Greater Manchester Police, Maggie Oliver, who joins us live this morning, of course, as well, um, founder of the Maggie Oliver Foundation. Morning to you, Maggie. Good morning, Christo. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us this morning about this story. I had so many people messaging me about this, saying, why aren't more of the media talking about this? Um, why do you think, firstly, before we get on to this, do you think the media have, have kind of given up on this story a bit? Do you think it's not really reported, certainly in the broadcast media, as much as it should be? I do, I do Christo. Um, as you say, this has been... This, this topic has been part of my life for the past 12 years. And this case <clears throat> reflects what is happening regularly throughout the country and has been for well over 20 years. And, and you're right, the, the, there was only one media outlet that covered this um, that was present in the court. And, you know, I've stayed out of all these debates that have been going on about far-right extremists and riots and all of that. But I do think if we don't talk about these kind of issues, that the, the, the consequence of not dealing with this particular kind of crime, I think is part of what we're seeing and what's going on in the country. Um, because people are really angry that men like this have been able to get away with raping children for 20 odd years. And it seems that the authorities um, regularly do nothing about it. The, the, this case, you know, these children were failed and have been living with this for over 20 years, 30 years, pretty much all of their lives. And it's taken all this time for them to see these men jailed for what they did. Um, I think the sentences in this case, though, you know, when I look back at the, the 12 years I've spent sort of fighting this this corner, um, on the Rochdale case that I'm known for, you know, the man who got a little uh, little girl of 12, she was just 13, pregnant, he was out of prison in less than four years. So uh, on, on a positive note, I look at the sentences that these men have had, um, you know, 25 years, 24 years, 16 years, those sentences more properly reflect the damage and the horrors that they put the children through whose lives they have destroyed um, so that is a little bit of progress but on the other hand why are the media not shouting out about it why is there not um you know some of these men they, those men will still only serve half of those sentences christo um but it's better than it was and there is um, most definitely public awareness about this and public horror. So I think that the, the fault lies with the mainstream media and with the, the successive governments who have turned a blind eye to these kind yeah. of crimes um, it, over many years. It is something, I mean, I, I, you and I first met because when I worked in daytime TV, I was part, wasn't just me, it was, I was part of a team that actually used to put you and, and other victims on, on daytime TV shows on ITV because um, it was uncomfortable viewing. It was not nice for people to have that in yeah. their living room in a nice, cosy daytime TV show, but it was also yeah. what was happening and it needed to be exposed. And, and, and that's how you and I have got to know each other. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, we must keep doing this because it isn't being spoken about enough. I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail about what the victims went through, but they were picked up in their cars, given cigarettes, alcohol, cannabis, money, then forced to perform the most horrific sexual acts with a number of, of men. I mean, it's the same story that we've heard so many times before. Always. 
This happened in Rotherham between 1997 and 2013. Why is it 11 years after the, 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 the last crime was committed that they have been brought to justice, do you think? I, I think there's, there's numerous victims, uh, numerous reasons for that, Christo. Um, I do still think that there is um, a reluctance to deal with these crimes. But on the other hand, they are very complex crimes to uh, investigate and to um, to prosecute. And that means that um, there is a reluctance amongst the police forces to deal with them because of the resources needed to investigate these crimes. Um, but, you know, one of these little girls was 11 and she talks of having been put through the most horrendous pain she's ever felt. Um, and, and listening to all that, um, the families of these abusers, of these rapists, were, were also in court and they were outraged at the sentences that their loved ones have received. So I think that that points to a much bigger issue within this community. Um, I am not saying, and I've always said this, I'm not. there are many, many good Muslims, good um, people from Pakistan, but there is definitely um, a problem um, within parts of that community that still believe that this is okay and unless we send out the message publicly repeatedly that it's not okay um we will continue to see men behaving in this way why, thinking why, it's okay why do you think no one wants to admit i mean i remember there was a, a story of uh, maybe a couple of years ago where an mp i think wrote an article and said there is an issue within the pakistani muslim community when it comes to grooming gangs and again, not saying that all people within that community are subscribing to grooming gangs. That would be ridiculous. There are many Muslims who are as outraged about this as, 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 as everyone else. But why do you think there is a massive reluctance to admit and to try and solve this problem? Because if, I mean, you certainly touched on it before about this two-tier accusation, and that must yeah, be a part of it, you know right? What? I mean, you know what, Chris, both you and I now have both talked about these men from this community raping young children and we both felt the need to qualify that by saying not all muslim men are like this not all pakistan are mine like this if i was to say that jeffrey epstein is a pedophile that uh, harvey weinstein is a pedophile i wouldn't feel the need to qualify that by saying but not all white christian men are pedophiles there is still this elephant in the room and i think it we we, we have to address the crimes that these men are committing and when you look at the ethnicity of most of the um, members of the grooming gangs, you don't need to know where they're from to know the, what ethnicity they are. So there is something within those communities that we need to understand as a country, as a community. I know from my work, Christo, that within their own countries where they have originally come from, and many of them were born in different countries and they have come to this country as immigrants within those countries it's quite okay to marry a nine-year-old little girl you know a six-year-old man can marry a nine-year-old that's none of my business because it's not my country but in the uk we have laws to say you cannot have sex you cannot rape an 11 year old well, child it's also so we have to be consistent within the law and make sure that the law treats everybody equally. And we keep hearing about, I mean, I'm not commenting on this, but we keep hearing about two-tier policing. And, and this really is an example of that. And what I've just referred to about, you know, um, white British men raping children, it is wrong, just as it is wrong for Pakistani but, Muslim but I th men. I think the, 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 the slight difference is, which is why I think it is a bit more serious is that this is a hate crime element like if it, i think sometimes in other cultures if there is and this is why this is part of the problem that needs to be solved if there are other cultures that might carry out a horrific rape um it, it, it tends to be slightly more random but the, this is these are girls mainly who are targeted because of their race because they're white i mean if you look at actually the number of girls and i, I don't need to tell you this um I think it, every single one but one of ever thousands of victims have all been white. So to me, this should also be prosecuted on the level of a hate crime because it's actually partly racially motivated too. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you, Christo. Um, and we're not having these conversations that they're, they're, they're carried on between individual people 
But when you bring it into a public arena, people are frightened of being accused of being a racist. You know, I always say, I am not a racist, I'm just not. But I see children, we have to protect children. And if we don't talk about the reasons for this, and we don't identify why, we are failing children. It's an uncomfortable conversation, but it is a conversation that we have to continue to have. Is it still and happening we, now, Maggie? It's happening every day, Christo. My, you know, the Maggie Oliver Foundation, we support all survivors of any sexual abuse, but we are still supporting survivors of grooming gangs who have been repeatedly raped and abused today. So it's not a problem of the past, which the authorities would have the public believe. This is still going on and it's a mindset that we need to understand and address. And these sentences actually go some way to sending out a message that this is wrong and the law will deal with it adequately. So for this case, I think there has finally been a little bit of justice, but it still raises so many questions that we need to answer. And of course, it's just worth, uh, uh, listen, Maggie, thank you so much, but just worth a note to say, uh, a moment to say the bravery of those people who stood up in court, those victims and actually faced these perpetrators Incredible. and gave their victim statements and did all of those things. I mean, going through it for another time is is, yeah. is absolutely amazing and should also yeah. be acknowledged. Maggie Oliver, we admire your work so much. We will keep trying to talk about this story and I really appreciate you taking the time so early in the morning.